So I would like to thank Karola for coming to Prague. Today we are starting our new program called Landscape Exchange, where our main idea is to share the knowledge of landscape with Swiss-based practice. Our first guest is landscape architect, planner, and researcher Karol Anton, one of co-founders of studio Anton Landschaft, based in Zurich. Uh, the studio is composed by different professions, landscape architects, architects, art historians, uh, and office was collaborating also with uh, biologists, sociologists, anthropologists, engineers, um, in the first project reshaping our boundaries of profession. Uh, today we would like to focus on the transformation of landscape, uh, like more particularly on afforestation, stratification and infl infl infiltration as a new sustainable transformative approaches in landscape architecture. Um, before the lecture, I would like to say something about Carol Anton. Uh, what is very interesting is that uh, maybe her path uh, in education from engineering towards landscape. She studied architecture on Technical School of Architecture in Spain, in Seville, developing technical and construction skills, uh, where she was mostly working on some big infrastructure projects, even though a promising infrastructure management career was ahead. The motivation for a more creative approach encouraged her to apply for the Master of uh, Landscape Architecture on ETH, where she finished uh, under the professor of Christophe Girot. She was also there a teaching assistant uh, at the chair of uh, Gunther Vogt at ETH, uh, focused on transformation of landscape. In 2005, she was working in Studio Vulcan, which is our next participant. And she obtained a relevant professional experience there in the field of landscape architecture. In 2009, she co-founded Studio with the biologist Dominique Gigi, Anton and Gigi. And today it's called Anton Landscape. Uh, what is also uh, very interesting is that uh, she was teaching at Lucerne University of Applied Science and Arts. And also that behind her profession and, and uh, academic uh, research, she she's very interested in independent uh, personal uh, research as, as the project Microforest is called. She did it in Spain, Colombia and Switzerland which I hope she will present it today. And that's all. I would like to thank you again for coming and to thank uh, Jana Moravcova for supporting this event and Swiss Arts Council Pro Helvetia. Okay. Thank so you, you can continue. Thank you. Thank you for hosting me. And thank you for the invitation. Yes, it's a, it's a pleasure to be in Prague in these moments even when it's, everything is getting so difficult to travel. And, um, and uh, once we are thanking, I would like to thank uh, my team, because we are, of course, uh, the, every project is uh, at the end, is uh, the, the result of a lot of people working behind. And also all the, yeah, the different professionals we work with. We work with engineers, with, um, like you, you said, so sociologists, with uh, artists and uh, it's always the question where, where is the boundaries of our, of our professions or does it have a boundary? Maybe, maybe it doesn't. And uh, since we are really in these uh, weird times with this uh, virus and everything, it's, uh, we are only talking about this. And it's like if we would be into a film, I thought I'd start also with a film. In this case, it's a film from uh, Hitchcock and uh, it's The Secret Agent. And it's a film, it's playing in uh, Switzerland. And uh, I just uh, got uh, some, some uh, conversations between uh, Hitchcock and uh, Truffaut uh, about the film. Uh, he said, okay, what's, what's about the film? Okay, the film is played in Switzerland. What does have Switzerland to offer? And he said, okay, you have the Alps, you have the lakes, you have chocolate. So you need to kind of build a drama with all these elements. You need to find like people drawing in lakes, people falling from the climbs, from the, from the, 
from the Alps, you need to, yeah, everything has to do in a, in a way from the side, no? And that's uh, like uh, maybe what we do, not, not maybe so, it's not always so easy to find what the site has to say, but it's always uh, an issue to find what, what is about the site. What every project is a different world, and um, we try to make always kind of almost a scientific approach to it. We try to check a lot of different layers of information and also the emotional aspects are very important. We don't like to go to the site and see also what does really the site has have to tell. And uh, in this kind of research, we focus a lot in erosion in the la last years. And why erosion? Because erosion, it really shapes the landscape. Erosion in, uh, you have like um, hydrology, the, you have the geology, but also men as a, as a really uh, active uh, agent of erosion. That interests us a lot, especially in, uh, in urban context. And um, in this uh, case, we would like, we always investigate this urban erosion. What, what does, uh, when we really check the site, it's like uh, you have the, a lot of, uh, um, examples in which you see that the, the, the cities we live in, they are really made of all these layers and uh, you kind of need to dig in and say, okay, which one of these layers are important for the project? And that's why you, we call it unfolded landscape because it's you, once you, you find the, the subject, you need to kind of unfold it and uh, build a project um, based on it. That would be the idea. In order to exemplify what we are studying or which, what we are working, we will talk about three themes. That would be afforestation, like you said, stratification and infiltration. There are three themes that have to do a lot with erosion and um, in which each one of the theme we will talk about uh, two projects. They would be rather a build project or some uh, research project or some competitions because sometimes the most interesting projects are not the ones built but the whole research behind all the competitions. And uh, we will travel from uh, uh, Doha to Colombia to Bogota, then back to Switzerland, going through Germany. And uh, it would be kind of a travel, a journey in, in time and a, a journey also in different, different countries. First, we start with um, afforestation because, um, and that uh, like, uh, with the main issue of, of trees, because trees are the most successful in stabilizing and fertilizing soil. And that's why we will, in, uh, in this uh, theme, we will explain with uh, two projects. First of all, I would like uh, to make, uh, to show a small uh, film, a small piece of a film, talking about the soil. So we see. <laughs> It's a small piece of the film uh, Microcosmos and um, I like the piece because it really shows what yeah, this, this, uh, this soil, what it, it's really so important, it's so dependent of so many other agents like water and, and, uh, and how trees um, yeah, are so important in order, in order to stabilize the soil. That's why we start with a project in, uh, in Doha, in Qatar and uh, with uh, the certification and afforestation, that would be like the first subject. It's, uh, we started with this picture from this uh, Arabic botanical manuscript from the tw uh, 15th century to show how important are also plants uh, culturally, how important ha they have been in culture, in religion, in all aspects of our lives. And uh, of course, in all the uh, environmental uh, aspects, of course, that they, they bring. Uh, the competition was uh, taking place between 2015 and 2017, so really a very long competition, with the architects Adam Kahn from London and Vern, Vern Schmutz, and um, with Arup uh, als Engineering. And it was a four-stage competition. First was uh, nearly 500 people, then 20 people, then eight people, and in the last stage were two people 
and we didn't win. It was an uh, elemental win in the uh, Chile-based uh, practice. And, uh, but I think still we made a really interesting uh, trip um, uh, developing the project. And we tried to make really a context-sensitive approach uh, to the sites because yeah, that's the thing, the architects as well in, uh, in all layers, the engineers uh, as well in, uh, to see exactly what the site has to offer and how can we uh, transform it. The site is here, you see it, it's uh, really, the whole site was something like this, quite big. Here you see there are like these old uh, flower miles and uh, we had to work in the, to work in, um, let's see if I try to find it, thank you. And it was about uh, 93,000 square meters, so it's really huge. I, made like a, a comparison of site with the Taj Mahal to, to know what we're talking about. It's just something, it's almost absurd. It's really, really, really big. And um, first of all, we need to understand the site, no? what does, again, the site has to, have to offer. And Qatar is a limestone and Dolomite uh, peninsula with uh, a very interesting topography, extreme desert conditions shallow sea uh, water with a really, really high salinity level, with uh, very arid and uh, with sunny and uh, hot climate and very strong winds. But it also has really interesting um, and rare fauna and flora. And uh, we try with the proposal to make this uh, linkage between this cultural heritage and the bio bi biological diversity on the side. When we see here, that's a sketch, we work a lot with sketches. We have like uh, the sides, which is here. And let's see if it works here. And uh, we have also other museums around. The Museum of uh, Islamic Art and the National Museum. You know probably the one from uh, Nouvelle, which was uh, recently finished. And the idea in the project was to link uh, all the, the museums in a kind of a big park. And um, we started working with, um, there is an existing park, the green area is an existing park, with a lawn and some palm trees. And um, we tried to work with different uh, type of landscape, also in a big scale. We, tr we work with uh, like the typical desert environment, that would be this yellow area. With the, we propose a mangrove forest, that would be the red area. And we have also this um, kind of garden sites with all the, with the building. And um, the whole idea it would be to make kind of as, as sustainable as possible, so that we don't need a lot of irrigation and that we try to work with the conditions of the site, which were really quite, uh, quite difficult. Uh, the building was quite very interesting with the architects because they are um, they were rooted in this vernacular vernacular architecture and it was the idea of the soak and uh, there was all this idea of these spaces that you find and you need to find and, and uh, between the building this the, the, the building is like this sandstone it's really like perforated through the sea and you have like on the shape on the sea it's very you there are spaces which are very extroverted towards the sea and then you see there are like these uh, um, uh, patios uh, full of, of gardens, which extended towards the, the, the landscape. And then that would be like, that's like a view from outside. I will show some projects, not from the final stage, but uh, from the whole process, because I think it's, it's interesting to see how things change as well. And uh, it was very important also, the, these uh, museums are like a kind of a door, uh, to understand like a doors to, towards the landscape. They are always on the edge between land and, and landscape and the sea. And uh, there are always big shelters uh, where we were, shadow is a big issue and, uh, and uh, the wind as well. We were fantasizing with a lot of ideas of how could this shelter would be in uh, relation with uh, these or ornaments and decoration from the Islamic architecture. Many of these ideas never came to the, to the hands in of the competition, but I thought it was interesting to, to develop and to, to make the whole research. 
If we concentrate in the gardens, we'll go through these uh, three landscapes, like the arid uh, desert-like landscape, the uh, mangrove uh, forest and the, the gardens. We start with the gardens because uh, then I can explain a bit about, about the building and this, uh, there are some sketches in which uh, we developed this idea of the gardens within um, a palm grove. The idea would be that this, um, these gardens, like in the, in the, the Persian co concept of gardens, they are really clear defined spaces which are uh, rather defined through the vegetation with these palms or defined in, in, through the building. And uh, the um, uses of the building, this kind of uh, museum uh, um, uh, uses that you, you have sometimes within the building and sometimes they really come out in the landscape and you have some sculpture gardens and uh, um, these uh, gardens used uh, for, for, the, for the aim of the, of the museum. There was quite an extensive uh, research about how could we do this as environmental as possible, as environmental friendly as possible, because it's really very difficult. And we were talking about these uh, possibilities of desalinization, but then it's the issue, what do you do with the salt? Because the sea is already quite salty. The, the issue of the wind, how could we use the, the vegetation in different levels to, to protect these uh, hard winds, at least a little bit from the side. Within the building, there were a lot of studies with uh, air to see how could we cool the whole uh, uh, space and we tried to work with uh, the palms which we already found on the sides. Palm trees, we made some studies with, uh, from um, model studies to, to see like the density of the space, how could those space uh, develop on time. And then we jump to the next, uh, that would be the yellow area, that's this uh, desert, typical des desert environment. The idea would be to have like a, a, in a long term a really low maintenance uh, site which is not so easy and uh, the idea is, was to work with the um, uh, sandy based local flora. It's really, they have really amazing plants there which uh, you, I mean okay, for me were a lot of them quite, quite new and um, it was the idea to have really like a, to display this living coll collection of plants. And you would, uh, they are all plants that which are indigenous from, from Arabia. And uh, it would be a chance, we, we thought that way, a chance uh, to, to, for the, to increase the appreciation of locals from the, to, the, to their um, beautiful landscape. Sometimes when you have it, you don't appreciate it as much as when somebody comes and really like shapes it in, in a way and, and shows it in a different way. Uh, for the um, selection of plants, we, we checked there are quite some publications about uh, this local flora from the UNESCO and, um, and uh, from the Education and Information for the Conservation in the Arabian Flora. And uh, you find really, uh, it's really interesting, uh, super interesting what they are doing uh, to promote the vegetation from the side. Like in a view, you would see it would be like a combination of this extensive landscape from this um, desert plants and then like the almost the oasis, no? when you have like the building and all, all the, the palm grove and on the gardens inside. If we come to the mangrove forest, that would be the red area. The idea was on one side it was the, the, the subject of the, of the winds and on the other hand was also the subject of, of the desalinization. And uh, also because it's in, in, in Qatar, there are also quite some forests of uh, mangrove forest existing from, and um, it would be a chance also to bring it into a, a cultural context. So we really, when we go to a museum, we will, we will, it would be also kind of a small trip or you would have a small sip of uh, what kind of landscape you can find on site. And, um, this, uh, I mean, mangroves, I guess you know, no? they're, they're always in the intersection of uh, salty and sweet water and they really are, are ecological, have a huge value in order to the, okay, reduce the salinity of water. We make also some, uh, some model studies, how would it be? And uh, we found it very important because uh, despite their uh, importance, uh, the mangroves are un under threat uh, worldwide. That's a, a picture from uh, Colombia, but it's also a, a, 
mangrove uh, forest there. I took it because I was there and I realized there are like uh, there's always this landscape which you find in different places and uh, that I have a lot of things in common. Yes, we jump now to uh, Bogota and I would like this is a uh, with the same theme uh, from uh, afforestation, this time in relation to uh, urbanization. And uh, the idea, it's, uh, it's really like uh, in this is a research project that we work with a dendro dendrochronologist and uh, an artist with the idea of, of um, uh, finding uh, really like again, these uh, layers of meaning. What what does the tree has uh, have uh, can offer us? Uh, what does it have as a, as a meaning? Not only like environmentally, but also like a cultural, uh, very cultural, important cultural element. Of course, you can find information from the site, from the fossils, from the um, rocks. You find it from, but also from trees. And we concentrate in trees. And through the micro sections of trees, you can find a lot of information, not only the, the, the age of a tree, but also uh, an incredible stories about the site and the environment uh, they grew, they grow in. And with these micro sections, uh, in the laboratory, laboratory, the dendrochronologists work with them with some, uh, some um, liquids which transform the sections into colors and there they can read a lot of information and we say okay these are like pages of, uh, of a tree which tell us about, about a lot about the size and uh, there is a lot of information uh, brought with that and uh, we work also with an artist which uh, makes, makes an interpretation of this living books, let's say that way, and works again in wood with uh, li, um, some xylographies, uh, making a, like an interpretation from the perspective of today, from, from what, what those trees have to tell us. And um, it's like a, a, like a, a symbolically a, a way of uh, rewriting the, the story. There are some, uh, that's uh, some of the wood uh, works and um, it was the idea to bring f um, especially the audience attention from f to this project also that because it was very important that uh, to establish a linkage between the, the trees and the population i will explain it uh, in and uh, some of these um, pieces of art are for example in the museum in taipei so coming from from uh, bogota we have uh, there are the study has different uh, sites to study, one of them is Bogota. Bogota is really um, really high, 2,600 uh, uh, meters above sea level and um, it's very interesting to see that the Indian population from that time, they, they had uh, a very interesting relation with trees, they were not only a source of uh, wood and food but they were also something else, they were like, like really expression of the divine power. And that, of course, was a problem when the uh, uh, colonialists, the Spanish actually, arrived there because uh, it was kind of a concurrence to the only god. And they saw trees as like a threat and started cutting them systematically. There was also um, in the industrialization uh, a big, uh, they were also cutting a lot of trees in order to, f to build all the big infrastructures. and. Um, the result is this, no? we have like a, from a, a really <laughs> green from Los Cerros towards the river to a place where there is almost no linkage between uh, the mountains and the river. And um, we try to illustrate it that with some, some sections. And so what we, what we try to do in the project is to select, um, make a mapping of these trees, which uh, three species, with species which were very important at that time for the population and uh, bring them again in some reforestation uh, programs with the idea of, um, of bring this uh, cultural meaning of the tree again and using the infrastructure which at the moment are just big loans with no trees and uh, because it's the only space free to make this connection again between the mountain and the river. And uh, with this, by foresting with these uh, holy trees uh, we try to really connect between the, the people and the history of their place. We change uh, subject 
to stratification. Um, there is like a the stratification is meant for us not only these uh, this geological uh, processes in which uh, the, uh, through, through, uh, through time material was uh, brought from one place to another, but also, like I said before, uh, men, like a, a really a, a very big uh, erosion agent. And uh, over time, we see that we kind of, we build, we destroy, we build, we destroy, and that's, we make it all the time. And um, yeah, and then there are these layers, 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 and it's uh, always important to understand how how many. Now it's a big issue as well. No, how is it worth it to uh, to to build so much and destroy so much to build again? No? And uh, we try to um, kind of uh, was was a theme for a competition in Switzerland. We won. In, uh, in 2010 with the Bauman Rosalind architects with a school, it was a park and a school. And there we try to, um, to work with this idea of the reuse of materials. Like, uh, okay, we destroy because there are new needs, there's always a reason to build again, that's why we all have work maybe, but uh, it's really the idea how can you do it with a bit of, of sense in a way. And um, the, the project was finished in 2015. And uh, to explain, I wanted to go back to the ice uh, age. Now, that would be a, a picture from uh, Zurich. If you've been in Zurich, you would see at the end, when you see the lake, you see the Alps at the end. And uh, there is, um, it's very well known that the whole landscape in Switzerland is uh, the result of, of all this geological um, uh, retreat and, uh, and, um, and movement of, of, uh, of ice in, at that time, this warm and cold periods. And uh, that was, of course, with a rhythm of a really, really long time. No? The, the ice was coming and then bringing material back. And, uh, and at some point, we have now the landscape that we have today where the, the um, the glaciers went back to the Alps and we have the lakes as, as a result. And that would be the same picture more or less today. And uh, that's a postcard from uh, 19th century, 19th century. And the idea would be to, to show you know, that, of course, the glaciers transported a huge amount of material, but they also made it with a, in a really l large period of time. But we men, move also a lot of material and really in not such a long time. That is like to see that we probably humans are the most uh, erosive uh, uh, <laughs> agent in, in a, the shortest period of time. Especially now when we were working here in the site when, when, where the, the project is, it was all in full transformation. It's, uh, it's marked in red, the whole area around. It's, uh, it was an industrial area from today, it's almost nothing there it's all new buildings uh, the uh, high, it's all uh, new developments and uh, we when we came there it was a really a huge building site and but it, what was interesting is that the, the site was about two or three meters lower than the, the, the city around and at the beginning we thought well that's quite strange no? did they make an excavation or what's this and it's the other way around it was like the during the industrialization they kind of fill the whole area because uh, of the, they needed a space for industry, also to build the railways. So these two or three meters, they were kind of filled up, and the original level. So it's the, the level from the park. So we kind of theme uh, was uh, the theme of the project. We started working in uh, in big models for the competition to work to see okay what could this um, these layers tell us, not this topography. And we came to this, uh, the, the name, I, I don't know if I said it's called Fings Weid Park. And uh, it's like um, Fings is um, Pentecost, and Weid is like, a, a, um, how you call it, the, the, it's where the place where cattle goes uh, to, uh, where uh, shepherds bring the, the cattle to feed. And uh, you have like, a, you, we kind of said, okay, so we leave this lower level, which was like the older level from the one we, we found on site. And that would be like, it would represent this old green uh, mixed oak forest pasture uh, area. 
And um, around it was the whole idea how we would make the transition between this green area and the city because the, the space around was very, very difficult, very different depending on the site. And um, we, I thought I'd put a small video of the building site because uh, especially for the architects it's always nice to see how, how the, the building is taking place and also to see how, many mat how much material are we moving around as well. That's it. The video is in YouTube, eh, by the way. You see on the left side is all new. There's nothing left from what it was when we started the competition. Okay, and uh, that was uh, an issue, this, these materials, where, where do they come from? To a large extent we brought the materials as much as we could from other building sites around or from, from, other, um, from, other, from the forest, from all over the place. No? This picture is, for example, it's um, a picture from the main station, it was also a build, uh, there was new, new railways being built and the old ones were being turned down and we happen to be working with the engineer working in the same building site so we said okay we can use the foundation of the uh, that are uh, from the demolition and we wanted to work again with it and we brought about 200 cubic meter of this foundation and we kind of embedded in, in new concrete walls and uh, made like the 200 uh, meter wall of the of the park uh, which would help us to save the the different of uh, difference of height we also used that uh, a picture from the roof of one of these uh, uh, um, places also being demolished uh, for, from the main station. And we got from here 170 cubic meters from, from this gravel and this uh, uh, substrate. And uh, we bro uh, brought it in these embankments and uh, just made uh, some seeding again. Actually, you see the small. Um, uh, back, that's what you use to, to see the whole place because you already had some plans uh, from, from, the, from the roof before. And then we kind of, we, it helped us to, to form the whole uh, landscape. That's like a big. We also took uh, some um, wood uh, uh, from the forest, from Zurich. Wood, if you see, like uh, they don't want to use this wood because it's, uh, you want to use the big pieces and so, but these ones. They are not really, you cannot sell them, you cannot do much with it. But of course they have quite an ecological value because it's a place where all these small insects and animals have uh, find a place. And we also, we brought it to our site and um, some other uh, um, oaks from the site, we, we transform it in small sitting places. All, all the, the material is from the, from the forest from Zurich. We also, from the, <laughs> from the main station, we took half of the, <laughs> of the building site from there, it was 140 meters from these elements. These are these uh, L platform uh, elements that you find on the edge of the station, always between where you stand and where the train is. And uh, we rebuilt it to also to, to, um, to reuse it to, to make a small um, uh, topography difference. We also all used uh, old um, cast iron legs from the, that the city had in some place um, piled up and transform it in really long um, benches, which uh, you can see really long benches in, uh, on the sides. That's, you see as well, not that, uh, the, the school and the park and the different of height was made with this, uh, all, this, all these elements. And um, otherwise, of course, we, have, we wanted to have water and uh, we have uh, this uh, when they, at the beginning it seems like there's nothing growing there but of course after some time it starts flowing and uh, 
you just just some some impressions of how about how this place is changing this whole edge is uh, really only se uh, there was some seeds and uh, it has some times of the year when you have nothing and then it's like a, it's blooming like uh, spectacularly that on the embank embankments we introduce all the playing playgrounds so so we form, we shaped with concrete, it's like a big sculpture almost. We play, made all these um, slides and the places where you can um, play with, it's not, they're not really big infrastructure, it's more like playing with the topography and with the space. Now is the, the school finish, was uh, finished this year and we made also the, the sport uh, facilities. And in this case, it was uh, asked to have uh, like a, a more, uh, uh, conventional if you if you want a playground we made it with uh, it was um, a motor singer it's a, a specialist a specialist from Zurich they work very well and uh, it was the an interpretation of the machines that were built uh, at that time and, and former times on site and we we'll go to Germany now <laughs> I hope it's not too much and uh, with the idea of, uh, of soil and, and how to uh, and shifting of soil. This is like, a, it's a, again a design of a park. And uh, it's also very important, the relation between the, logic, the geological formation and the, for, the morphology of the park. It was a second prize in 2014 in Germany. And uh, Neutraubli, that's the place, it's located on a gravel, gravel plain. And, um, the interesting subject uh, uh, about it is that the, it's covered about, uh, from a, a really um, um, uh, like uh, um, aeolian deposit. So that's like in the ice time, ice age again. They were the, the these deposits through the wind. They were bringing this kind of fine fine material, and the fine material is what made the, the soil really fruitful. And um, the site is we made it's like a photo montage about the, like the geology underneath and uh, and uh, the site around and we wanted to use this uh, this subject to to um, to define to develop the project and that's what we did that's like uh, this uh, go go boden is this soil made from this sand which was uh, moved uh, in the ice time and which make that the, 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 the soil is so good for plants. Today it's yes, okay, it's all like in one level. And uh, what we said is okay, we only in the uh, perimeter, we only take one part of the soil, we move it to one side. And therefore you have like an area made with a soil which is more based in gravel and this area which is very much uh, fruitful, much better for plants, well, for, for certain plants, let's say. And that, with that, we make like a double figure with uh, filling and removing material. It's only like a, like a shifting of, of this soil la layer from above. And that um, uh, it has as a consequence that, you, of course, the plants that you grow with one soil is fully different than the ones that would grow in the other. And that has some sp spatial consequences where you have this uh, soil from the place. You can really have these big trees and and in the other area, that would be like uh, where we removed uh, and, uh, the, the upper layer and le le left uh, the, the gravel, you have like a fully different landscape. We call it like the La Sabana almost, no? because you have like this kind of grassland, uh, very, um, yeah, with this depth. No? The other space is, is very, very much, uh, it's a, a big contrast uh, of both spaces. And that you have like this counter figure and uh, through planting and through seeding you get like this uh, to like the whole um, spatial, spatial formation of the of the park. And we change subject <laughs> that we infiltration now. And uh, why infiltration? Water. Water is a main issue for erosion, of course. And uh, of course, the way we deal with water makes also uh, has uh, big uh, consequences in how the, our landscape looks like. 
and um, we have, uh, I mean, water is it's very interesting. It has no color, no flavor. It seems to, mm, we have the same um, amount of water since four million years. But uh, if water that gets into, into, in the middle of some rocks and it gets frozen, it can really uh, blast it. If you have like a really for a long period of time, always the same water going through a space, you, you can really make a valley really, really deep. Huh? So it's like uh, the wa water really designs landscape. It has always uh, done it. And then we, again, men, we are also erosive agent. We bring the rivers and we dry them, or we just change the source of the river, or we uh, make them really straight. And uh, so we control it because there's always this uh, uh, fear with water. And uh, of course, all these changes affect um, the rest of the water regime on the, on the region and brings also once again, or very often, this, uh, these floods. That's why I put some small video with that. Pas du tout. Chaque février, c'est du pareil au même. Que d'eau, que d'eau, s'écrit tous les MacMahons de Villeneuve-Saint-Georges qui décampent en vitesse parce que sur eux s'abat l'avalanche de neige métamorphosée par la printanière apparition du soleil entre les Alpes et la région de l'île de France d'où je pars tous les matins pour aller en autobus jusqu'à Paris. Ok, c'est en allemand et en français. Mais elle parle de la flotte. Elle dit, oui, well, chaque année, c'est le même. Chaque année, elle pense qu'elle vient de trouver des fleurs. Et en fait, elle trouve tout couvert avec l'eau. Et c'est ce qui est intéressant, non C'est un cycle, parce que vous avez cette eau, mais chaque fois, elle est différente. Et elle est toujours un peu de neige. Vous ne pouvez pas vraiment contrôler. Vous devez gérer le fait que vous ne pouvez pas contrôler. Et vous devez gérer le fait que vous ne pouvez pas contrôler. And you need to deal with the fact that, that things, you need to work with those issues. If you try to work against it, it's, it's very difficult to come to a good, uh, to a good end. And um, that's, um, that's what we try to do in this project that I, uh, I'm going to explain now. This is in Hüttengraben uh, in Küsnacht in Zurich. It's also a competition that we won in 2009 with the Bauman Rosrens architects. And um, it was uh, finished in 2017. And the site, I had some historical pictures, so you see, it's like uh, you have the Zurich Lake and then you have the topography and the site is a bit above, it has quite a nice um, perspective from, from the site. And um, it's very interesting, the, the geology, because uh, the, this, the place where the site is, is almost like a, like a shoulder. In the, it, it makes really like, a, like a, uh, the morphology is very interesting. And uh, along this, uh, this uh, shoulder, there is, a, there is a panorama way, a path, not this, this yellow line. And uh, it's a, a way, uh, like a, a path you walk through, really it's, it's quite, quite long. And you find again and again this kind of water features, some ponds there and you say, okay. And, um, and that's also because uh, there are, on, on the site, there were also some flats at, at times, and that's, w we were trying to work with the, the idea, you know, what, what is with these flats, what is with this soil, what is with this vegetation, what is with this site? And um, we assume that once, also this site was a, a moor with wetlands before the, um, the um, the agriculture came there and we work with this idea like a more island we call it and the idea was really to make a compact uh, um, site with the budget, uh, with uh, the the buildings and there are housing buildings and the vegetation and to leave the the existing um, landscape to flow on both sides we work always again with models 
to see like uh, the houses are quite good because you have uh, orientation to all sides the forest is very nice uh, very very close and uh, you have like uh, two kind of landscapes they're really like the wide landscape with these fruit trees and the dense uh, more landscape where these buildings are inside and uh, the idea with the moor was quite difficult when we proposed it because uh, of course the people from the side made quite fast the connection with the floods I said, okay, more flat water, no. And uh, so we really have to change the name of the project and say, okay, it's like a, pla a planting island or whatever until we, we manage to develop it. And uh, that's why the site was uh, being flooded. But, uh, it's and the important thing is that, so we tried to work with this idea of the more, not only like with the vegetation, like, a, like because it's, it would be a nice thing, but to work really with the rain with the rainwater. And we, the whole system is like a made, I don't know how well you see it, with the topography was really all with a very, very subtle modulation. So we could uh, make like uh, the water, uh, small water ponds, no more than 20 centimeters because it's, um, it's not allowed for, for kids, for security reasons. So it had to be a really subtle uh, formation of the topography in order to bring the water from one pond to the next and then to the next and then to the next in order to uh, to bring the rainwater and to leave it uh, to make a filtration on site but of course it needs quite some time all the 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 water we wanted to make it visible that's why we made some uh, like uh, canals uh, bring, coming from so the the water from the roofs from the building we also we root it on the place and uh, the vegetation again, we, as we said in the other projects, of course, uh, vegetation, soil and vegetation come together. And um, we developed, of course, in relation to their, like, the construction, that's one of those point, ponds. You need to make it also with different layers to, on the, to, in order to f make a, um, a proper filtration of the water because it has to be clean before it goes to the groundwater. And uh, that's some pictures to, to show the small the kind of subtle topography when we started, uh, when we finished the building, it was not uh, grown yet. And uh, at some point, really, when, when it really rains, it's like they are almost on a lake, which for the kids is quite cool and for the parents, not always. Mm -hmm. But uh, <laughs> and of course, the playground, it has to do with it. It's like a big uh, boat with uh, some uh, nets some perspective towards this empty landscape and that's uh, there were some pictures when it really started uh, growing with uh, some grill places and uh, so that's like this dense topography in relation to the in contrast to this kind of uh, wide um, almond okay and now it's the last project and and this is um, it's called La Machina Meravigliosa. That's a, like a project made with uh, the biologist uh, Dominic Gigi and the artist Corina Ruek. A, a competition also won in 2009, won a third prize, if I'm not wrong. But uh, we got to build it again because, uh, as well, because it's, it was like a, a competition for some temporary gardens. And what is what's interesting on the side is that to make it even a, a, more, a bit more difficult, the, you could choose a site and we chose a site underneath uh, um, the earth, so in one of the metro stations from the new metro line which they were building. And um, we made very often these uh, geological la layers to understand, okay, where are we? And uh, we understand this metro like, a, like a really a t tunnel on time, no? because you go through all these layers of uh, geological layers which, which were formed in, such a, in a quite a long at um, time and uh, yeah we started to make this fantasy about this uh, journey to the center of earth like um, uh, Jules Verne this uh, and uh, to say okay what can you do you need to do a garden and you are underneath you have no light no natural light you have no what what kind of and then we start saying okay these uh, stations is, are full with small machines small uh, cameras sen sensors it's almost only artificial lighting, these infrastructures all over. So we decided, okay, so we make a machine as well. 
but a living machine. And we started working with an um, overhead pro projector and with some moss. And the funny thing is that the, this uh, uh, glass uh, piece is something like this. It's really very small. But of course, with the overhead projector, if you um, have it, uh, you project it on a wall, you really get a, quite a big image. And uh, of course, moss are only the, the few things probably that you can grow in, in such conditions. So we make like a, this um, small um, glass uh, um, uh, square, uh, cubic full of water with this moss and with a small pump in order to move it. And then the overhead project, uh, projector. And the, the advantage of this uh, pump is that, uh, is that the water moves and depending if the, the, um, the moss is closer to the glass or uh, farther away, you see the shape very, very sharp. Uh, sharp is German, huh? uh, very clear, or you, you see it very blurred. And uh, of course, the moss can grow on time because you only need, they don't, they are not, they don't need a lot. No? And we made all these studies, look, okay, this is like this, this depth, probably, uh, suddenly, in something really so small. And we made some studies of how, how, where should we project it, or should we project it on the wall? That's like the machine, eh? that's me some years ago, actually. And uh, on the floor, let's take a, with this movement. How would it work with the train? Okay. That's clear. You, you can, we couldn't use it on the train because you had some blinding problem. And uh, when we got, there were, there were all these experiments before we really got the real site. And when we got the site, Sad enough, it was extremely, there was quite almost too much light. <laughs> you expect to have it very dark, so it had quite some light, but uh, still we do it. We made this small machine into a water tank where this overhead projector was inside. And this is a film from YouTube from I don't know whom. In high speed, so the, the poetry is a bit not exactly there. But you see that there is something, something happening, no? With all this. Uh... Yeah, and with this journey to the center of Earth, I would like to thank you for your patience. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free. <coughs> So the second part of the presentation, you're talking about the project in Zurich? Yes. So I was interested in how did the process work? Because at the beginning it's somewhat creative and then it gets to the bureaucratic point and it somehow slows down. But you coincidentally came across that engineer who was also working on the train station. Mm -hmm. So how do how you combine this sort of almost improvisation with with already something that is uh, really planned out with bringing in the different pieces of the train station? I think uh, one of the, uh, the main point is that we work with the city. And they were also interested in this kind of uh, approach. And uh, the, let's say, the idea of work with these materials from the site was not so improvised in the sense it was not really at the end of the project. Very, it was very, as soon as we won the competition, which was, we made it with a model, it was very abstract, everything, we jumped into how, how, how should we materialize it. And then, of course, it made sense, we need to find, and we started doing all kind of tests with this wall, with, uh, and uh, it was always like in the, in the first part of the project, when, when we decided we will reuse certain materials and so so it was uh, so that the cost with, because that's the main point always no that they could be into the in the parent, let's say in the in the um, in the frame where we were that, that we were given so it's not so improvised but of course probably if it would have been a development with a um, real estate uh, i don't know maybe it wouldn't have been possible so it was more about finding the materials 
it was a, I think it was really a way of developing the project. Uh, sometimes I mean, from a competition until you build it, of course, it, it, in the first stage it's very abstract. And uh, it's, it was a way of really developing the idea of the project. So it was not, it was not only the idea of, per se of reusing materials, but it was really because we found, I tried to explain it with these uh, the two labels, no? We, for, we were from the beginning like almost obsessed with this idea that we have this level so low and that the rest of the city is, is been like piled up with the time. We said, okay, how can we bring this, this how can we unfold this idea back, uh, uh, back to, to, in order to see it? And that was, that's why we started uh, with this idea of the materials. But it was really in a very, very early time of the project. And of course, some of the things were even a way of saving money, which also helped a lot, because we used a lot of gravel materials from the neighbors which were building, and uh, they were making huge excavations. And these materials, otherwise, they would have to brought them somewhere else. And for them it was perfect because they just have to deposit in our site and we, we reduced it. So it was almost also quite, um, quite some luck we had as well that we could use some of, them, of the materials from the site. And that we were working with the city, of course, the Grunstadt Zürich. Mm -hmm. I would like to ask, uh, thank you for your lecture, it was great. Uh, this multidisciplinary approach, which is in every project, like between art, engineering, infrastructure, landscape, architect, I would like to ask you how you are working in your office with different professions from the beginning of the project till the realization. Do you, in the beginning, are discussing the topic and ideas with these different professions, mm -hmm. or you are kind of like uh, I don't know, introducing them later? Right. Or? Very often we, we work uh, interdisciplinary uh, way from the beginning, even in the competition. We're, uh, and sometimes you realize when you develop the project that you are not so good in something and some, another per perspective from another profession could really help. So I think it's kind of both. But very often it's uh, also in quite an early stage of the project. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, this uh, the last project. I think it uh, it's, it's showing also that architectural landscape or any uh, project doesn't have to be built or like realized. The mm -hmm. project that it can be just some new medium. I don't know this projection, like some new medium showing or mm -hmm. trying to find some answer of something or this this one we built it, but for three months. It was like a temporary, but it's true. We, I think, in our profession, we make more, we invest more time in research and making competitions and I don't know what, than really in building, because uh, I mean I don't know how it is here, but uh, I almost get no direct. Uh, uh, no, nobody comes to me directly to ask me for a project. Some, but not many. Most of them, 99% of the projects we have, they are made out of competitions. And of course, each competition is a new, it's a huge invest, investment in time and, uh, and uh, energy and, uh, and money and everything. And, but it's, that's the way, the way it works. Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe also, I hope you're last Do you have some other ideas how to break some nature? Like to underground, or that, that's been the only way, the only time we we work uh, with the subject. We won lately. I mean, okay, let's say we were on the team, in the team who won um, the extension of a of a um, uh, main station in uh, in um, train station in Zurich now. And um, in that case, the lead was by the architect and the engineers, and there was not exactly space for something like this mm -hmm. it's a uh, it's it's very difficult to have to find uh, like space to make this kind of experiments that's why these competitions like the one in Los Angeles which make this kind of uh, like it's like a, a short-term intervention you really have the possibility of make these experiments but otherwise it's yeah it's not so we don't come across so often to uh, to such opportunities
No. But it would be cool to do it. Eh? I would be interested if somebody asked me, we develop it tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. But it's nice that you are like reshaping the boundaries of a uh, profession, like of landscape architecture, architecture, or by this. In nowadays, you're almost obliged, no? Because it's like uh, the, the profession changed so much. And uh, I don't know, at the end, you work with sites, you work with ideas, you, work with, you, you try to, to develop the ideas and to transform it in something that uh, is built some, sometimes. And uh, the more you, I mean, you learn all the time from all these different disciplines. And I think the more you work in this uh, way, because very often you, you talk about it, no, yeah, multidisciplinary, but sometimes they are like, uh, okay, in, at the beginning of the project and then that's it. But I think if you really manage to, to bring uh, this knowledge forward, it, it brings, it's a, a huge uh, uh, give in for the project because you cannot know about everything. Well, and there are always different perspectives, interesting, discuss interesting discussions. Yeah, I think it's uh, a part, uh, one of the parts of the project you can enjoy the most. Yeah. Well, thank you for your thank you. Thank you.